to write a commercial single of two times three minutes. <laughs> I know that's what you want. I, I think it's possible. Uh, you know, I have given myself permission to do anything I want. This is the main thing. I, I, I will do anything I damn well feel like. And that, whether it's a pop tune, whether it's a string quartet, whether it's experimental music, and uh, I felt that uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not limiting myself. I'm not. Uh, making descriptions of myself that will limit what I'll do. But at the same time, you're going to be an expensive composer, maybe? Be nice. It's not so bad. Uh, the, one of the things that I find uh, among my contemporaries is that, uh, that, that p artists very often take a description of themselves, which is maybe partly initiated by them, partly imposed on them, and then they almost feel they must live it out continuously to the end of their life and I have always rejected that uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't bother me if people are disappointed or upset because basically uh, I'm involved in the music uh, for very personal terms and very personal development um, I don't particularly care about making money if I had I would have gone into popular music years and years ago if I really wanted to make money I would be writing uh, I would be I would be doing uh, orchestrations for Broadway shows so uh, on the other hand, uh, making money is not a crime to me either. So, it, it's, uh, it's not, uh, it's to, to me, money is not an issue. I think for me what's really, in uh, the issues are what is interesting for me to do. What areas I have worked in and what areas I can open up for myself. And that way, uh, I'm not so, I, can you imagine me, as you know me, can you imagine me writing any minimal music that I used to do ten years ago? It's not, you know, I just wouldn't do it. There's some composers that will. I mean, uh, there, there are composers uh, that are doing the same things they did in 1965. We know who they are. I won't mention their names. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what with your collaboration with rock musicians? Last year you worked together with Mike Oldfield. Well, that's not quite true, but I have... Uh, w it, Mike Oldfield used a uh, material of mine to make a record. Uh, uh, it wasn't really a collaboration. But, I, but it's true that I have worked with uh, rock musicians, and I'm interested in them. Um, because uh, I got interested in this way that uh, as I found uh, young, uh, among younger musicians I've been interested to see what direction they're taking and it was clear to me that the people under 25 were not doing experimental music. The smartest and the brightest people were going into I would call it non-commercial forms of popular music. There is, and it turns out there is such a thing that there are people doing popular music but they they're the people that don't get the record companies. They're the people that don't aren't playing at, uh, at the big so they're the people that aren't playing in the big concert halls. But uh, there are people working in an idiom which, is, uh, which I would say we must call it popular in a way. It's uh, not experimental music, and they're not drawn to that. I find that uh, I've been, I found it interesting to know them, and inevitably I've begun doing some things with them, some little projects here and there. Uh, it's mostly been, to, to be truthful, it's been a way for me to learn what they're doing. I did a record last month with a group called Polyrock. Did you know that? I should give you a copy of it. Who's the, who's the group? It's a young group. Uh, the, the, the guy that wrote the material is 20 years old. It's, uh, his brother's 23. The average age of the band is about 20, 20 years old. And you played with them? I ended up playing on the record because I wrote things for them which they weren't really able, or not that they, actually they asked me if I would play on the record. Actually what happened was that the record company asked me if I would co-produce a record with Kurt Casey for them, and they said we could pick any band we wanted to that was not signed to a label. So for a year, we just went around listening to bands, and it was very, it was actually very uh, stimulating, because I, uh, and I didn't even know that I would do it. I told Kurt that if I didn't find any people I liked, I wasn't going to do it. And in the end, we discovered this band, and they hadn't, didn't have a contract, and they were very young, and uh, I thought they were very talented. And uh, in the end, after much discussion, we ended up doing a record with them. That was a re that was much more than I mean. Oldfield just took a tune of mine and did a disco job on it, which, well, I c I understand he sold a lot of records, which is good in a way. I mean, I don't really care. But it didn't interest me as a project even. But in relation to rock, in relation to rock music, you still make distinguish between uh, new languages for art oh, composers definitely. and packaging. Oh, definitely, uh, definitely. Uh, I mean, the, the difference between Barry Manilow and David Burns is... But is yeah, is start. Is big Can you do this? Okay. Yeah, the difference? Oh, definitely. Uh, the difference between someone like Barry Manilow and David Burns of the Talking Heads is it's as big as the difference between, uh, I don't know, between David and myself. Or 
it's a world of difference. Uh, Barry Manilow is a superstar playing in Madison Square Garden, and you find people like the Talking Heads or the B-52s, to mention people that are well known, really uh, working in an area which I think I think is very inventive, and in the terms of you know commercial music is inventive. Uh, I, and uh, what will happen to the music in ten years we can't really say right now, but. Uh, there's no interest in, for me at all in hearing another version of the Eagles or any of that music. It's not, it's just junk. I mean, it's what I call repackaged music. Uh, with uh, someone like David Burns, I feel he is inventing a language. It's, a, it's a, a language, I think it's possible to invent languages in the world of pop music as clearly as in the world of experimental music. And there are these young people doing it. We have, uh, we have only to spend just to go out to some of the clubs and hear. Of course, you have the same thing as in experimental music. You have people who can't play at all. You have people with no talent. It's the same thing that you find in the kitchen in New York or, or in any you know, emporium where experimental music is heard. You find people with no talent. With, uh, you find people with great talent. It's uh, like anything else. But it's, I feel it's an area that's totally legitimate.